Hi, this is Michael, and this is my review of the Zero Explorer quadcopter. Uh, the box has everything you need to get this going in no time at all. You get two sets of props. Uh, you do have to install the props. They're very easy to install. You notice that one set of motors is silver color, the other is black. You just put the silver colored props on the silver motors, the black ones on the black ones. You look on top of the props and you'll see small arrows here which shows you what direction they are to be spun to lock on and then you just firm them up a little bit so they're self-locking basically. Um, you also get a few uh, extra parts and you get some extra screws which I think are just replacement screws for the LED light covers. You also get a set, an extra set of little rubber tips that go on the landing gear. I'll go into a little more detail about that in just a second. You also get a little Phillips head screwdriver, you do get a little wrench, and uh, you get the battery and the charger, and let's look at that right now. Here is the battery you get, it's a 5200 milliamp hour LiPo smart battery. Uh, it does have a battery indicator on it. You just push this little button. There's four LEDs that'll be lit if it's fully charged. I've been flying a little bit this morning, so it's only three bars right now. Then you get a battery charging base. Now the battery has all the terminals on the back here. You just slide it into the base, click it into place, and then you get the AC adapter here. Now this is uh, 100 to 240 volts, 50 or 60 hertz. And it does come not only with the US plug, but it comes with several European adapters. And you simply plug that into the front of the charging base. Uh, once it's plugged in, the LEDs on the battery will flash, indicating that it's being charged. You'll notice a USB port here. They also give you a USB to micro USB cable, and that's so that you can charge the controller. You can charge the battery and the controller at the same time, which is really convenient. However, you can also charge the controller using any USB charger or even the USB port on your computer. The controller is very nice, uh, very nice quality, it feels really solid. It has these rubberized pads on the bottom so when you grab it, it really feels secure in your hands. It's a matte finish and it does have a handle here for carrying which is quite convenient. It does have a hook here to hook the strap up to. Now this goes around your neck um, and it uh, puts the controller in front of your chest. Uh, I don't like this strap because it's not adjustable in length and also for me it's too short. I would like a longer strap. Let's take a look at the Explorer. I've got it next to my DJI Phantom. This is the original version here and you can see it has a lower profile and it's also more of a stealthy look. Uh, the DJI Phantom design is getting a little long in the tooth. So this is a more contemporary design. Uh, it has not retractable but foldable landing gear. Uh, about my only complaint about this quad is the way that the landing gear works. Now you need them in the vertical position if you're carrying a gimbal. If you're not carrying a gimbal then you can flip them uh, back if you want but you might want to keep them vertical in case you're landing in grass so I usually keep them uh, vertical for most of my flights. I would like to see a more defined click into place here because a lot of times I notice that I'm not sure how it happens but one of the legs uh, sort of gets out of position and uh, sort of freaks me out a little bit thinking that when I'm landing it might collapse completely and cause it to tip and the blades or props would hit the ground. So you do have to use a little caution when you're handling the landing gear. Um, there's a single button on the top. This is the on off button and when you turn this on it'll light up and it starts blinking as it's looking for GPS lock. Once it's found GPS lock it does not blink any longer and you also on the controller you do get an indication of GPS lock which is really really helpful. Uh, now the battery goes right here and I'll show you how that goes. If you are using a gimbal then you would take this cover off and this is where the gimbal attaches to the uh, quadcopter. Since I'm not demonstrating the gimbal today I'm just going to put this back on. Now the battery compartment, uh, the battery installation is pretty easy, much easier than on a DJI Phantom, the older versions of the DJI Phantom I should say. There's a little line here, you just need to line up the battery to that line. There's also kind of a tray here and you have to line up this part of the battery on that tray. 
So you just have to use a little bit of caution or care and get it lined up and snap it into place. And then there's a little lever here that just slides up to lock the battery into place. Um, I did show you the battery indicator. I always check that before I start to fly just to make sure I've got enough power to get me somewhere. Now the controller is very nice. Oh yeah, there's one more thing I want to show you here on the uh, quadcopter itself. Here's the USB port. Now this is for uh, this is for connecting to a PC uh, for the application that uh, lets you set flight parameters. Also, if you need to perform a firmware update. Uh, there was a firmware update available as soon as I got this, so I did apply that right away before I took my first flight. Controller is really, really nice. It's very accurate and very uh, fluid. Um, the, the whole quadcopter itself flies so much more easily, to me anyway, than the DJI Phantom. It's smooth, it's stable, uh, it performs really well in gusty winds. I was flying the other day, it must have been 25-30 mile an hour winds gusting, and it really held its own. It was very stable. I could not believe how well it flew. You've got three buttons here on the front, and you've got a, a little switch lever here that goes from one, two, or three. Number one is basically your beginner mode. Number two and number three just give you a sharper angle of attack when you're flying, higher flight speeds, and a little bit faster ascents and descents. This is your IOC button. This is your intelligent orientation, so that no matter how the quadcopter is oriented, Anytime you pull back on the stick, it's going to come back towards the home, or if you push it forward, it's going to go away from you. This is the return to home button, uh, and this is really key because if you get disoriented or you lose sight of your quadcopter, you don't know what's going on, just push this, and the quadcopter will return to where, from where it took off within a few feet. Really great. And then this third button here is the um, automatic takeoff and automatic landing button. Basically the quadcopter takes off automatically, stabilizes at about five feet, and just remains there hovering until you decide to start flying it. Uh, it's really great. Now this is the uh, retractable smartphone holder here, and that just, if you're not using that, you just slide it back in. And then this is for where the range extender clicks onto. This is the on-off switch for the controller. Really nice, it's pretty lightweight, but a very accurate controller, and I like it a lot. So I'm gonna turn this on, and let's fly this thing. All right, do a little quick test flight here. I just wanna show you the return to home function and also the auto takeoff. So we're gonna start the props, and I'm just gonna push the auto takeoff button. And you see it's stabilized itself, it's just going to hover there. Now we've got, some, uh, we've got some gusty winds right now as a matter of fact, probably gusting 10 to 15. So let's do a little quick flight out and back. Now I'm just going to push the auto land button. And it'll shut the motors off automatically. And now I'm going to hit the return to home button. And that's it. This is a really nice flying quadcopter, and if you have any questions, leave me a comment. I'll answer it if I can. Otherwise, thanks for watching. Have a great day.